All right, let's go ahead and set up Bootstrap to run on our application. And what we're going to do is just going to go to this Getting Started link and follow that link to look at the SAS version of, uh, or the SASified version of Bootstrap. And it's got some pretty nice documentation here that says the way that we use it in Ruby on Rails is that we tell it to use Bootstrap Gem. So we're going to copy that and we're going to go to our gem file and right below telling it that we're going to use SAS we're going to tell it to use Bootstrap uh, version, uh, the SAS version of Bootstrap. So we can do that and then what we're going to do is run bundle install to make sure that it grabs that version of Bootstrap and gets the CSS and JavaScript that we need and then if we look down a little bit lower in the instructions you'll see the other two things that that we need to do are we need to tell it to use the bootstrap css and to use the the bootstrap javascript so let's go about doing that so let's edit this application.css.scss this prefix is the sas preprocessor so uh, Rails will see that and say, oh, you're, you're giving me SAS. I need to convert it from SAS into CSS before I give it to the web browser. Um, so if we look in app assets is where all of our, our files that are not that, um, so dynamically generated live. Um, and you can see that's where our, our JavaScripts and, and style sheets live. They are dynamically generated because you can use CoffeeScript and so forth. And if we look at style sheets, we have application.css, but we don't have that prefix. So let's uh, rename it to have that prefix. So when we edit that file, assets, style sheets, application, and we put in here are at import bootstrap. Now when we run it, it's going to see this and say, oh that's a that's something that SCSS wants to do and and we'll do that properly. Let's um, go ahead and also edit our app assets JavaScripts application.js and we can tell it that we want our bootstrap libraries as well. So now we've got uh, both the CSS and the JavaScript. Let's go ahead and start up our web server so that we can verify that we're getting our links to these documents. So if we go to our web server and we go ahead and reload the, the page here it runs and the layout is different. Notice it's, it's changed fonts on us which is a good thing because that means the default topography is already working for, for Bootstrap and if we look at our HTML that's been generated we can, we can see that we've got our application CSS, we have our bootstrap CSS, and inside of our application CSS, if we follow that link, it's got the raw bootstrap rules for, for CSS. Obviously we haven't done anything to change it, so that's why we just have the change of font and font sizes and so forth here, but it looks good. We, we now uh, can go ahead and customize our site to fit the bootstrap way of thinking.